the wilds of Nod, vast and taunting, to be my true companionship, the hateful silence, shredding at my mind, the soul constant. My brother's wraith, never to vanish, however in perpetual distance, his bloodied form unfixed, in my sight's corners, vanishing just as I turn. Little brother abhors me. Could I fault them? I damn myself on principle. The soil condemns me as much from God's curse as the blood's keening. My hands stained by blood with accompanied guilt. I ask not for mercy nor clemency. I deserve neither. Genitors a distant memory, never to be seen once more. Their memory and little brother shall haunt my days forevermore. This is, um, I guess, exposition. If you are seeing this part of the video, this is just my explanation because I didn't want to leave it in a description. I have always... So, yeah, no, if you come upon this, if you already listened to the free verse part, uh, feel free to ignore this if you don't care about like what I'm about to say afterwards because it's not important, really, but... I've always been fascinated by the idea of Cain, and you're probably if you're wondering how can you be fascinated by Cain? He's the first murderer. He's the father of fratricide. That's exactly the point. He is the in the Bible. He is the first person to ever kill someone, and the person he killed was his brother. Not only his brother, the only brother we heard he had, other than the one that was born after he was banished to Nod. Now think about that, though. If you are not only the first murderer, but the killer of your own brother, think of what that mentally probably has to do with how much of a mind fuck that must be. Because before this, murder wasn't a thing. Th there was no concept of what you had done. Well, as you know, maybe, I guess, in terms of, like, killing animals, they might have thought of it that it was similar to that, but... And based on what I know of the version, Cain... It's on some level, I think he did feel bad about it because I remember reading that he killed Abel and then he wept. It, it sounded like either it was a case of the devil put an idea into his head and he didn't stop listening to it, or him and Abel were in an argument and it was a spur of the like it got heated, a spur of the moment decision. And he immediately regretted what he did, like buyer's remorse in a way. So it was an impulsive choice that he had to, that he could never take back. And for the record, I don't think I've ever heard of ver any version of what their relationship was like. So for all we knew, these two could have been very close. So think about it. It's a bit like Dean and Sam Winchester. The difference is I like Cain and Abel slightly more. Sam and Dean often come off as douchebags who I would like to use for marksmanship practice. Um, these two are, let's say it was like that, though. They, these, these two are, are all they have in their world. They are good buddies. They care about each other. And then for a very dumb reason... Cain murders his brother and has to live with the, the mental fallout of it. He hides his body. He tries to cover it up. Maybe even mentally distance himself from what he's done. I mean, he doesn't. I doubt he could do that because that probably wasn't a thing they would have thought to do back then. I don't think, anyway. And so he does this. And also another aspect of why I find it interesting is because as a fellow older sibling, I can kind of sympathize with Cain. Like, look, every older sibling at some point, if they've had a shittier sibling or a shithead of a sibling who was younger than them, they've thought, I would love to beat you right now. Like, I'm pretty sure not all of us have thought about committing um, fratricide or sororicide or whatever. But there's probably a few of us who have. The difference being, Cain actually did it. He did what most older siblings have probably thought about at some point or another. If they've gotten real mad. And believe me, as someone who has a younger sibling who has been annoyed to no end, I, I would not be surprised if at some point in the past the, the thought crossed my mind. I didn't do it because, well, one, she's my sibling. Two, that's murder. And three, I would probably be going to pound me in the ass prison. And four, I would probably have a lifetime of therapy bills ahead of me. Assuming I don't get murdered. In prison, that is. Um... But yeah, there's that. And also, this, again, psychologically, there has to be a mind fuck for someone. Because not only have you killed your brother, 
Not only have you murdered him and become the first murderer in human history, but you are banished from where you're, you have lived all your life. And you never get to see your parents again. As far as I don't know if Kane and I think his brother's name was Seth. I don't know if they ever met. I would actually love to have seen that encounter, what that would be like. Part of me wants to think it's a bit how I would describe what happened when the devil and the, when Jesus met, where one time I jokingly said, it's a bit like, let's say you have an older brother who was a shithead, who was a, a jackass who left home one day, and you met him and you realized, yeah, every horrible thing I heard about this guy was pretty much on the money. That's more or less how I would describe the name between Jesus and uh, the devil. The difference is, it, also, it was a bit of, didn't ask for it, don't need it, go fuck yourself. Basically, like, hell seen a bridge dialogue card. That's how I would describe Jesus when talking to the devil. But anyway, um, but mentally, Cain would have to live with just infinite re- regret. It, or at least I like to think he would have. Because, again, I like to think these two had some close bond. Or at the very least, they had a bond of some manner. And you have to live with the thought that you killed and destroyed that bond. for an, On impulse. For nothing, basically. Because what God showed favor to... So what? Like, I remember another guy who had God's favor. It didn't end that well for him. His name his name was Lucifer. Granted, I actually know, funny enough, Lucifer did technically just break, burn that bridge for an equally dumb reason, but that's beside the point. Um, but yeah, you have to live with that. And also, wherever Cain goes, apparently people are going to try to kill him. And you're probably wondering, wait, if there's only Adam and Eve and these two how, and that other brother, how can someone be trying to come? Well, here's the thing. The Bible, I don't think it specifically said they were the only humans on Earth. They pro- Adam and Eve could have had other children, for all we know. That's one theory for why Cain has a wife. That's... It's either it's better than the Lilith explanation because I've heard some people think that it might have been Lilith and like I okay well uh, concern this is the Bible not the Ju- the Judeo Bible yeah no I don't buy that that would be cool though and it that would be an interesting concept like wait a minute you, you banged your dad's ex wife that's fucked up that's that's fucked up but, but anyway so wherever he goes and funny enough the mark God gave him was supposed to. Tell people not to do that because, yeah, if you kill him, God will visit it back on you tenfold. Uh, apparently, it didn't, and I think Cain had to fight them off and probably kill more people. And also, there's this debate on what the mark actually looked like. Some people think there's one version where it might have actually been a horn. Uh, but anyway. Also, there's no description of what actually was done to him afterwards. Like, there's this one idea of him being immortal, like cursed with immortality. As far as I know, that was never done to him, because he did eventually die. Hell, there's actually a version that says exactly how he died. I think it was the Book of Jaster. Or Jasher. He was shot with an arrow by this dumbass blind guy who was told to by his dumbass son, who was who was twice or no, thrice the dumbass. But, um... Yeah, not fu- not a fun time for Cain or them. But he was not made immortal, as far as I can tell, because he was eventually able to die. There is a ver- there is one guy I heard who was cursed with immortality. Uh, there's a version of Pontius Pilate, I believe. That's the Pariah story. And if you're wondering how is immortality a curse, it's easy. Um, you have to watch your friends, your loved ones, your children, your grandchildren. All of them die, and the world moves on and changes into one you do not recognize or understand anymore. And you are still forced to live. You never get to die and join them in the afterlife. That would be a shitty way to live. I'm not going to lie. That sounds like hell. Makes death seem like a blessing. But, uh... That's probably why Iluvatar set made human human lives shorter in uh, in the Lord of the Rings. Like my friend Dan's always saying, like that's that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. He made it to where they didn't have to live as long, and also he favored them. It, it makes perfect sense if you put your thinking cap on, Dan, and stop thinking like a human. So, well, actually, also you have to think of outside the context of you hating death, because he has that dumb hang up on that, I guess. No offense, Dan. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just found the idea of that context fascinating. I kind of wish there... I actually hope there's a story out there that focuses on that. That's why I did this free verse. So anyway, that the rant has gone on 
too long. That's the context behind why this video was up. Have a nice day. Remember the game was rigged from the start.